We light the Christ candle to welcome God's presence among us, that we may carry the light of Christ with us into the world.
Thank you, Verlaine and Chancellor Bells. That was beautiful. Good morning. Whether you are here in person or joining via the miracle of technology, we welcome you to the Bethel College Mennonite Church on this glorious spring morning. This year, the third Sunday of Easter falls on April, <clears throat> excuse me, on April 14. And that date has got me thinking about Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln has always been a favorite of mine. And for that reason, I happen to know that 159 years ago to the day, Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater in Washington, DC. I've been thinking that the world he knew in 1865 was in sobering ways similar to the one that we look upon in 2024. With a nation at home bitterly divided by citizens dedicated to antithetical causes and implacable bloody conflicts abroad in Russia and the Middle East. A month before his death, Lincoln said, in words that could apply equally to the strife in our world, Neither party expected for the war the magnitude or the duration which it has already attained. Both read the same Bible and pray to the same God, and each invokes his aid against the other. The prayers of both could not be answered. That of neither has been answered fully. The Almighty has his own purposes. One could see in this comparison a depressing commentary on the, state, on the human condition. But as an Anabaptist Christian, I see it differently. I think it is a testimony to the omnipresence of God in the world and the potential, even in the darkest of times, for healing and justice and reconciliation. Let's center ourselves in prayer. God, we ask your presence with us in our worship this morning as we seek to discern your purpose and our calling for today. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 765, Listen, God is Calling. This is literally a call and response hymn and will be led for us by Ron Garber. 765, please stand. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Jesus tells his people, share the good news that he came to save us and sets us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the world. In the triune name of God, go and baptize. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, 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 God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. How are you? Good? Awesome. Good morning, Emma. Good morning, Ellie. 
and Gabby and Jake. Awesome. Well, it is so good to see all of you this morning. Got Meals on Heels today? Yeah. Oh, I know. And that, I, I bet you went to the cell yesterday, didn't you? Oh, man, that's really a nice experience. Well, do you remember one time we talked about listening to God's calling, and I brought an old telephone in? Well, today, we're going to go a little bit different route to learn about why it's so good to listen. We had the words calling in our hymn today, and we're going to have it in our sermon. And so I brought something to help us out that we haven't seen for a while. What do you think it could be? It's not in the bag, but that's a good choice because we're going to talk about, this was my grandma's Bible, and each of your parents made a promise to God that they would teach you the followings of the Bible. So I'll give you a clue. She has four feet. A dog, you think so? A cat? How about Piper? Oh, here's Piper. Piper is going to help us learn why it's good to be good listeners and listen when your parents are... Yeah, she'd like to eat that New Year's cookie, let me tell you. (laughs) Why it's important to be good listeners and to hear when someone is calling you. Like maybe your parents might call you or your coach might call you. Have you ever coach ever say, listen up, you're good on defense, but we got to play a little more offense. Or your parents might say, put your seatbelt on. Or they might call you, it's time to come in. It looks like it's going to be raining. A storm is coming. So it's very important to listen when somebody is calling you. So Piper has to listen when we call her. One time... We smelled a skunk, and we quickly called Piper to come in, and Piper didn't want to come in. Piper's like, well, look at that cute little black and white thing. I think I want to play with it. Would that have been good? No, that would have been really good. That could have been really bad. So Piper has to listen when we call her because sometimes it's for her safety, And sometimes we call Piper because she gets to go run errands. She doesn't get to go in the stores, but she likes to go to Sonic because she gets a pup cup. And she likes to go to the bank because the tellers have dog treats. And Piper knows every stop where it's going to benefit her. So it's very important to listen when your parents are calling you, or when your coach, when your teachers, when your choir leader, always important to be listening because that's a way that you can hear God calling you. So going on a little bit different route today, I googled the top seven food items to help you improve your hearing. Because if you're going to be a good listener, You have to have good hearing, and if you're going to be good hearing, you have to be a good listener. And you know, if it's on the internet, it's true. (laughs) Okay, so you give me thumbs up or thumbs down, okay? All right, number one, fish. Yeah, fish sticks, yeah, that's good. Salmon, yeah, that's number one is fish. How about beans? No, uh, beans are on the kind of beans in your ears, yeah. Emma's on the bean thread. How? Oh, this is a good one. Bananas. Banana. Yep. Jake's on the bananas. Yep. No bananas for, nope. No bananas for Lawrence. Skip that one. Okay. This is one I bet you ask your parents for every day. Broccoli. <laughs> That's probably a down, right? Yeah. That, so, oh, man, we got, oh, you're in broccoli? Awesome. That is going to improve your hearing. Your parents are going to be so impressed. How much better? And Jake, you're awesome. Now, I know everybody likes this one, chocolate. And you believe, yeah, chocolate could help improve your ear. 
hearing. Garlic. Eh, maybe some, yeah, I'm with you, Jake. Maybe, maybe. And the last one is oatmeal. Do you like oatmeal? Yep. Oh, oh, one and up, some up, some down. So I thought, how could I relate these items, especially number one, fish, how could I help you relate these items to being a good listener and listening for a calling? So I thought about bringing each of you a little goldfish in a bowl, and you could take it home, and your parents would be so excited. <laughs> but then I thought, you look at your goldfish and think about eating fish, mmm, that may not work out too well. So I went a different route. I got you each a package of goldfish crackers, and we have rainbow because at Bethel College Mennonite Church, we're, we include everybody. So we have the rainbow fish, and this is going to help remind you, your parents are going to be amazed after church on the way home how much better you hear because you ate these goldfish crackers. Maybe, maybe. So I so appreciate you coming up today. And I have just one last thing to show you that doesn't really have to do with our story, but I'm excited to share it with you. Do you go to garage sales? Oh, man, I love a garage sale. So I went to a garage sale, and they had this. It's called a busy board, and we'll take it back and work on it in the nursery. Look at this. You can learn how to tie a shoe. Buckle by yourself so your parents won't have to do it. And then it comes with these little letters, and you can spell things out here. So I was thinking of you guys when I was at a garage sale, like, oh, our church can use that. So why don't we have, uh-huh. Oh, I'm not going to have one for Ellie. Yeah. Am I have, going to have one for Ellie? Have a yeah. We'll have a, yeah. And right after the prayer, I, you know, that is so thoughtful of you to always be thinking of your little sister. That's awesome, Jake. All right, well, let's have a prayer and thank God that we have ears that we can listen for callings, and then I'll give you each your goldfish crackers. All right, let's have a prayer together. Lord, we thank you for the ability to hear. Teach us to listen. I thank you for each and every one of these children. Amen. All right, can you take one for Ellie? Yeah, you know what? I think we probably have enough. You can have two. There you go. Yeah, all right. And Emma? Yeah. You're so welcome. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you for listening. I tell you what, you eat coming and going, don't you? You got it figured out. Yeah. <laughs> this morning after doing chores and having breakfast, I went out and got in my pickup. And when I went down the driveway, it seemed a little confused because it was daylight and I wanted to go right instead of left. Left would take me to Hutchison, right takes me here. We had a beautiful weekend and a lot of people and a, a lot of good participation in a variety of things. I make a disclaimer. I, I only know what two things brought. I know that there was a quilt that was, that was made by the McPherson Mennonite Church that brought $4,100. And I just found out that a, 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 a Barbie doll at the children's auction brought over $100. <laughs> this morning I want to express my appreciation for the generation and support of this congregation. This, this, the, you contributed financially. You contributed by volunteering. You contributed by prayer. You contributed by 
understanding the significance of what we do, and I never doubted your support. The Kansas Mennonite Relief Sale is a collection of volunteers. If you look at the website, we say that we need 1,000 volunteers. I think it's way more than that. And they come from all over. They come from a variety of churches. We have Amish volunteers, Holdman volunteers. We have Methodist volunteers. We have volunteers from our church, from churches all, all over. We also have volunteers that come from Remington Middle School. We have volunteers that come through a program called the Working Men of Christ. People are called to use their talents as volunteers that will allow the KMRS to be uh, the arms and legs of Jesus, to actively act in the faith to follow Jesus. The coming together for a once a year festival of fellowship is more than the money, and it is a celebration of God's beautiful grace and blessings. And we celebrate and utilize those blessings to raise funds to support the work of the Mennonite Central Committee. After months of planning, praying, and preparing, the Kansas Mennonite Sale was able to raise, with the help of this congregation, a multitude of sponsors, a multitude of uh, people who came to the sale, a preliminary amount of $510,000. This, when given for use, helps MCC to respond to the needs of the world, to provide seeds of hope and seeds of love. I thank each and every one of you for your support of the Kansas Mennonite Relief Sale, MCC, and for each other. During the sale, like the previous nine that I have had the privilege of leading, has been a bounty of blessings. And to this I say, yes, Lord, and all Benton.
reading from Ephesians 4, 1 through 7, and 11 to 13 from the Inclusive Bible. Therefore I, Paul, a prisoner in the name of our Redeemer, plead with you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called into one hope when you were called. There is one Savior, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all, who is over all, works through all, and is within all. But each of us has received God's grace in the major in which Christ has bestowed it. To some, the gift they were given is that they should be apostles. To some, prophets. To some, evangelists. To some, pastors and teachers. These gifts were given to equip fully the holy ones for the work of service and to build up the body of Christ until we all attain unity in our faith and in our knowledge of the only begotten of God, until we become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Thank you, Sandy, and thank you, Bells, once more for uh, beautiful music. Well, these are exciting days at Bethel College Mennonite Church. There are a lot of things going on these days. We have enjoyed some wonderful creative worship services recently, in, uh, including Holy Week, where Judy Harder uh, led our Palm Sunday parade followed by some meaningful, reflective uh, Monday Thursday communion service, and then worship at sunrise on Easter morning with the youth leading us, then a great morning of worship of inspiring words, full organ, choir, and congregation singing praise to God on Easter Sunday morning. And as uh, Jim has already said, this weekend, many of us were involved with the Kansas Relief Sale, which is always a great event, with Jim Robb leading the way for many other leaders and volunteers and contributors and attendees from this congregation and many others. And of course, there are many, many other things that I could mention that are going on, one-time events, as well as many ongoing projects and ministries. I noticed that there is the annual meeting this week of the Community Play School uh, held this past week, a ministry that's been going on, I forgot to check, 40 years, more than 40 years, something like that. Can say? 58. 58, thank you, Jeanette. Uh, it's, it's, it's a marvelous thing to be able to sustain a ministry like that for, for so long and continuing to provide, of course, uh, so valuable uh, of an education and, and a ministry for children in our community. These, of course, are also historic days for BCMC, days that will go down in history of this church as important milestones on our in our congregational story. Next Sunday, as part of our annual Creation Care Sunday, we will celebrate the approval of a major investment in renewable energy, our solar energy project. A major investment in time and careful planning, as well as considerable financial resources, which will result in a smaller carbon footprint, as well as economic savings for our congregation for many years. We'll get an update next Sunday about that project for those, those who have led the way uh, uh, these, these last months. And of course, on the first weekend in May, we will meet a candidate recommended by our search committee and church board to be one of our co-pastors here at BCMC. That will be a weekend of getting acquainted and discerning together whether God might be calling this congregation to an extend and a call to Joanna Heritor to join us in our ministry here. 
and a time for Joanna to discern whether that call resonates with what she believes God is calling her to be doing. Now, as a pastor, I have always appreciated the care most congregations exercise in calling a pastor. Our search committee has done a remarkable job thinking through the gifts, the skills, qualities, experience that our congregation would like to have in their next pastor. All of us will continue the debt discernment process when Joanna comes to visit. And as I said, Joanna will also be discerning whether she feels that God is calling her to join us in this ministry. It's good to remind ourselves at this point in, in these days that the Bible is filled with stories of God calling people to particular places and tasks for particular times and situations. God called Abram and Sarah to go to a land that God would show them so that they might be a blessing to the entire world. God called Moses to lead the people of Israel out of slavery. God called many prophets, Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, to speak God's word to power. And of course, called jo God called Jesus into this world to announce the good news of the gospel and to demonstrate what the kingdom of God might look like in our world. Jesus in turn called disciples, Peter and Andrew, James and John, Mary and Martha, Paul, and many others to follow him and join in kingdom work, to be witnesses to God's will and ways in this world. Mennonites, along with many Christians, believe that in fact God calls every Christian to be a witness to God's will and ways in our world, not just clergy people. And God gives every Christian a unique charisma a particular combination of gifts and experiences to contribute to the community of believers and to bless the world, just as Abram and Sarah were called, called to do. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, to each Christian is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. In fact, the members of the body that might seem to be weaker are the ones that are, in fact, indispensable. Now, these convictions about call and gifts, along with the great appreciation I have for the attention congregations give to the process of calling a pastor, inspire me to wish that every Christian might have the same care and attention given to discerning their call and their gifts for ministry, their particular place in the body of Christ. <clears throat> a discernment process not just for clergy people, but for all Christians. We Mennonites, along with many other Christians, believe that the priesthood of all believers. We believe every Christian is gifted to serve in one way or another, and so become a minister of the gospel. Now, for some Christians, discovering one's gifts for ministry can be relatively easy. Gifted musicians, artists of all kinds, people with special skills, and abilities often just stand out. But knowing one's gifts does not always mean knowing what one's calling is. People who have multiple gifts have to decide which gifts they are called to exercise at a particular time and situation. Should somebody sing in the choir or volunteer for Circles of Hope? Should they join the Inclusion Task Force or reach out to Bethel College students or join Mennonite Action? in confronting national leaders with the need for a ceasefire in Gaza, or address some other injustice that few people even know needs to be addressed. Gifted people soon realize that there are many more worthy activities and causes than one person can possibly be involved in. We might think that, well, we should then address the most basic of human needs or those worst injustices. But who's to say what the most basic needs are or the worst injustices? Some would say, well, food first. But what if food only prolongs a miserable life? We might say, well, so housing first. But to have a house, you have to have a job. So, well, then jobs first. But then you need skills to hold a job. So it's education first. So how do we decide where to start in a world of need? There are people, on the other hand, who may not be sure that they have gifts to contribute. The poor, those with disabilities, those who are older and limited in energy or mobility, 
What can they possibly contribute? What is God calling them to do? We forget that the Christian life is a journey in two directions simultaneously, a journey inward and a journey outward. The journey outward is where we are co-creators with God of beautiful art, where we serve the needs and the needy of the world. But there are also is the journey inward, where we find that human beings do not live by bread alone, but by the word of God which nourishes us, by prayer, by words of affirmation that we are loved and valued beyond our economic and social usefulness by the words of neighbors or friends who encourage us and challenge us. It is at the intersection of the inward and outward journeys that we find God's call. The place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. The place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. It is the place where we find community, the place where we find God walking with us on our journey. I heard the story once of a blue collar sort of guy who started attending church, uh, who, a church that believed in helping people find God's calling in their lives. So church people started asking them over the time, well, what do you really enjoy doing? And after some time, he finally decided that what he'd really likes to do and feels like it's important is cutting hair. Now, what does cutting hair have to do with all of the injustices of the world that are crying out? Well, he decided that people felt good with a good haircut, helped people feel better about themselves. Okay, fine, but what does that have to do with God's call? Well, the man came to realize that many poor people don't have money to pay for a haircut which sometimes affects their appearance in job interviews, and in general, reinforces a feeling among the poor that they aren't worthy of looking good. So after receiving a grant from the church to attend barber school, the man moved to the hill country of Appalachia to provide a haircut for poor people who couldn't afford them, which led many to to many life-giving relationships being formed and auxiliary services offered, all from a simple, seemingly minor, but God-given passion. When a person finds the calling to which God has called them, the energy and passion of the Holy Spirit comes down and inhabits that person and all of the people around them. We know, it, we know from our experience here at BCMC the truth of this insight because we see it often. When Judy Harder is called to lead the worship experience, wonderful things happen. When Raylene Penner, Heinz Penner, issues a call to seek in indigenous justice, people respond, seeking ways to repair past injustices and learn from Native cultures. When Hugo Boschman, Lorna Haubegger Harder, and Dwight Crable see that it might be possible to revive interest in a solar energy project in our community, people rally around to that project. When some time ago, Rose Howery and others who loved to quilt saw a resurgence of interest in quilting and realized that quilting materials are accumulating in people's attics and closets unused, they saw the possibilities of matching quilters with useful materials and Quilter's Corner became an important part of the Kansas Relief Sale, producing materials for wonderful works of art as well as for comforters for people forgotten in poverty and war as they have received those comforters from the work of MCC. When people needed quality childcare some almost 60 years ago, and people realized that they could develop caregiving and organizational skills to offer that care to children, Community Play School was born. We could, of course, go on and on about this. When people see poverty in our community, Circles of Hope is born. When we see the homeless, New Hope Shelter is launched, and now it's recently expanded. Now, I guess that many of you have found your callings for now. Some callings last a lifetime, but some only for a season. God may be calling us, some of us even now to new areas of service or co-creation. 
I suspect that the people who are new to BCMC may be wondering what your place in this body of Christ, which is BCMC, might be. I hope we can help you discern what God's call might be for you in this time and place. The, diff, the, dis, uh, the gifts discernment committee certainly stands ready to help and may even have some suggestions and give people literal calls these days. I suspect that those of you who are in high school are in the process of figuring out where God might be calling you in these next few years. What God is calling you to do, not only in the next few years, but for a career. I know some of you are wondering whether God is calling you to make a public commitment to following Jesus in baptism, one of the most important milestones in the life of a Christian. It is interesting to me that Jesus was baptized when he was called to begin his life's work. I wonder whether baptism is not only a public sign of commitment to Christ, it is also a commissioning service, a commissioning to service in the kingdom of God. Kingdom service doesn't wait until you decide to go to college or find a job or start a career. God is calling people right now to kingdom service and kingdom living. Most of the leaders of the Anabaptist movement, in fact, were young people, people in many only in their 20s. It's not too soon to begin discerning what God is calling you to do now and in the future. Like the early Anabaptists, what you do now can have a huge effect on, on our world. Finding God's call in our congregation does not end with calling a new pastor. According to Paul, in fact, pastors are, are to equip people for the work of service, to build up the body of Christ. Our church staff, perhaps in the future, including Joanna, are and will help the rest of us discover and respond to God's call for this time and this place. God continues to call all Christians to service. Paul pleads with us to walk in a matter worthy of the calling to which you have been called. May we encourage each other to discover and respond to those calls. Amen.
Before we pray together, I want to let you know that Howard Schmidt passed away yesterday. Details about his memorial services are still pending, so please keep Marilyn and their extended family in your hearts and minds as we join together in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light, sadness, joy. On this beautiful morning in Kansas, we pray for those across the world who suffer, for children in Ukraine and Gaza, in Syria and Yemen, in Central America and South Sudan and Pakistan and the Philippines and countless other places who suffer in wars they did not start and do not understand. We pray for the 12 million children in our own country who live below the poverty line and for the four million thought to be homeless. We pray for all who struggle with poverty and pain and despair. God, we pray for the leaders we charge to respond to that poverty and despair, the leaders of our country and our communities, of our churches and our colleges. Give them wisdom and fortitude and compassion and make us, in turn, responsible and caring citizens and participants in their work. We pray for the suffering members of our own church, for those who are ill or infirm or slow to mend, for those with crippling daily anxieties they feel they cannot share, and for those grieving losses, including Joanne Funk, mourning the death of her sister Virginia Kaufman, the family of Don Kaufman, and Marilyn Schmidt and her family. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. In our rural community, God, we pray for farmers and ranchers who pursue their calling in an increasingly uncertain environment. We pray for the businesses and services of the small towns that support and depend on them. And at this time of year, we pray especially for the firefighters and other emergency personnel who put themselves at risk whenever lightning strikes or the wind blows hard. And with all God, we thank you for the blessings and privileges that all of us enjoy through the fortunes of our birth or the efforts of our forebears, for access to health care and education, for the freedom to worship or assemble, for the security afforded to almost every aspect of our daily lives, for the resources to make a difference in the world. Help us to remember that to whom much is given, much is required, so that with firmness in the right, as you give us to see the right, we may strive on to finish the work you are calling us to today. And now we ask your blessing on the offerings given here this morning, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 549, Be Thou My Vision. Please stand.
hear this benediction. Eternal God, you call us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, amen.